What else is needed in teams though? Well, that does not provide a complete and robust project portfolio management platform. So additional capabilities that we're gonna talk about to manage strategy and your entire portfolio and all the things that are around that as people you know, talk about all the full capability of portfolio management, we'll talk about how uh, we can add that uh, seamlessly with uh, what's being provided by one plan. Now, one plan connects strategy to execution, meaning you have an entire portfolio of data in teams available to you, but you're not limited to project for the web or planner basic or planner premium. You can use other tools for execution to handle those pockets of information that you might have in the variety of tools that are out there. So instead of making everybody hand over the tools that they're using today and switch to something else, we can leverage the things that they're using today of the more popular tools that are out there. Whether it be Microsoft Planner Basic, which is the you know, original planner uh, application, or Premium, which is the former project for the web. But we can also, for those users who need the more robust scheduling capabilities that are in Project Professional on the desktop, there are connections to that too, so we can leverage that into the same portfolio of work. The same thing holds true with things like Azure DevOps and other tool sets that are non-Microsoft as well. So the key is mitigating that whole data management and distributed tools dilemma that many organizations have today. Now, one plan is an authorized Microsoft Teams application. So for example, uh, if you go and go to add an app to your nav left navigation or left rail, as they often call it, it's available to you. You know, you do have to be a subscriber to one plan to use it, but it is available to you as an authorized Teams application. And it ends up being something that you can have um, um, per pervasive and persistent on your left rail navigation so that you can have full portfolio management capabilities available to you at any time within Teams. Now, one plan within an individual team, you can actually you know, select any team or channel that you have within one plan, I mean within Teams, and then you can actually add one plan as an app to that team with the add applet, you know, add tab uh, capability that's up that plus sign that you see in the tabs up above. And then you can add it from there and then ultimately access one plan from within that team, even specific to a specific project, for example, within that team. So the idea here is, is to use one plan in context of all the other collaborative things that you're doing within teams, including content and collaboration. What kind of things are we adding? Why would you want to do that? Well, portfolio visibility across all work. Now, could you use, say, Project for the Web, Planner Premium, and say, have it store in repository and just you know view some uh, Power BI reports? You can do that. But the portfolio visibility across all work really means that whatever source of data, in this case, you're seeing a bunch of icons for a bunch of different tools, each project could potentially be connected to data from a different source, a different project management, task management, uh, execution tool that you might be using. And the idea here is to be able to bring that all together into a common hub, really extending the hub concept that Teams brings to the party. On the portfolio planning side of things, you may want to look at timelines, not on a task basis, but on a more detailed basis at the portfolio level, at those portfolio line. And I'm sure you can drill in and go to the details of the individual schedules, but those portfolio plans at the high level is visibility you might want from a schedule basis and a variety of other views you might want. There's scenario modeling. You know, people in this fast-changing world want to evaluate alternatives when situations on the ground change. And so if that's the case, be able to look at a potential uh, uh, population of potential projects and projects that you might want to work on we can look at the constraints we have around resources like we have, like we see here below, or financials, or other dimensions that you might want to look at to arrive at a portfolio that fits within our ability to deliver and uh, aligns with our priorities. And the idea is to be able to, have, be able to do as many of those scenarios as you like without impacting the production data until you're ready. And then there's agile folks. Many folks are uh, doing the agile execution, but also want more agile portfolio management. And so be able to work with things in boards and be able to do things like program increment planning is something that one plan brings to the party. You know, yes, Planner and Planner Premium uh, brings a lot of detail from a board perspective at the execution level, but the portfolio level is where we're adding a lot of value, that top-down type of capability. And then the portfolio roadmaps. 
you know, be able to look at that high level portfolio and fashion real time self generated roadmaps that can be, you know, done in a variety of slices, you know, aligned with certain key events that you have, um, swim lanes by different data elements you have. In this case, it's looking at it by business unit or whatever other data, uh, metadata you might have around your projects. It's all there for you. And then one of the keys I talked about is resource management and the time phase data intensity that that entails. In this particular case, being able to look at a resource plan across all your projects and look where you're over and under allocated and resolve those things, or maybe even have visibility to this all the time so that it precludes you from purposely uh, over allocating. Sometimes we over allocate because we don't have the visibility we need. And sometimes we burn out people because we blindly allocate things beyond their capacities. Financial planning, once again, heavy time phase data and be able to have detailed cost categories, labor and non-labor alike, and be able to track different things like budgets and revised forecasts and actuals and compare them. And even uh, things like forecasting revenue and benefits uh, are all things that people want to do in mature portfolio management uh, scenarios. And then time reporting, you know, the, the timesheets is a gap and we can provide that uh, right within Teams via one plan. You know, we talked about syncing all the data from all those variety of tools that you might have out there. Well, if it all comes into a common hub and all those projects and plans and work elements are available then to you within one plan, you can now do comprehensive time reporting against those things. And let's just back up to a little more um, mature next step, which is really strategic alignment. You know, organizations now want to be able to make sure in the specter of strategic portfolio management, to build strategic execution plans, uh, typically these days with OKRs, objectives and key results, be able to model those and then align our projects with those strategies and key results so that we can ensure always that we're working on the right things or be able to modify those things as our priorities may change as we say things are rapidly changing in the marketplace. Ide ideation and requests, being able to have a place where there's a repository and a portal where anybody in your organization can come in and uh, funnel in ideas, vote on them, uh, uh, chime in on comments and other things like that, and be able to capture things like the business case information and the costs and the benefits we anticipate, and put them through an approval cycle, and then ultimately have these things promoted upon approval into uh, projects in your portfolio. And so the idea there is, is that you know we have end-to-end -end from the early ideation formulation all the way through you know, processing it as a formal request, all the way through it becoming a plan or a project or an initiative that we actually work on, all the way through fruition. And then the other piece that's a little more advanced is, and not all do, is the enterprise and business architecture elements. As we look at things in this digital age, when we make digital transformation changes, it usually requires changes to products that we have, changes to business capabilities that we have changes to applications that support those business capabilities that we have. And so just delivering on the project itself may be associated with our success in modifying or addressing a lot of other things. And if we don't have full visibility into that, we may miss some things and miss the mark in a lot of ways. Now, once we have these associations and alignments, right, strategic alignment and association of strategies and key results that are aligned with which projects and which epics, which in turn might be aligned with products and applications and business capabilities, to be able to visualize that and drill into any one of these elements at any given point in time is something that's very powerful as you wanna get into more collaborative uh, uh, and strategic uh, portfolio and work management.